What's good, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Community Voices. Today, we are joined by NBA guard Sterling Brown today. How you doing? I'm good, man. I can't complain. How are you? I'm doing good, man. It's, I'm out here in Denver. It's, it's been raining for like three days straight. I don't know where spring or summer is, but I'm living. Yeah. We're staying good. No, that's good. Yeah, it's been, the weather out here in Dallas is not bad, so um, we're going to enjoy, you know, summer coming up, so we're going to get ready for it. I love it. Send some of that sunshine my way. You know what I mean? Send some of that yeah, sun my way. Sure. All, right. <laughs> All right. So let me go ahead and hop into it. So, you know, um, I want to kind of start off earlier in your life, earlier in your journey. Um, you know, growing up, you had a brother who also played in the NBA. Um, I would love to kind of know what was the competition level like uh, in, in your house when it came to either whether it was sports, a game, whatever it was. What was that competition level like, you know, with your brother? It was uh, it was great. You know, he never uh, he never took it easy on me you know we play you know one-on-ones I mean video games uh it's, we got a, a pretty you know significant age gap but um you know that's why he never took it easy on me you know he was always little brother uh, big brother he made it known um but he would always beat me you know one-on-ones uh video games and everything and then you know as time went on I got better you know I started inching closer and closer and then when I finally started winning, you know, it was like, okay, he he had to take a step back. Like, you know, it's my time now. So uh, just growing up, though, it was fun. That's what, you know, instilled some of that toughness in me, you know, that that desire, that drive, you know, to keep getting better and keep, you know, uh, being persistent, you know, because, I mean, don't nobody like to lose. I hate to lose. So, you know, I mean, I'm steady losing every day, so I got to find a way to win, you know. So that's just another um, – you know, aspect of, you know, who I am in my game, you know, just finding different ways to win no matter what the circumstances are. So um, it was great for me growing up. I love that. And that's actually a perfect transition to my next question because, you know, we talk about the wins and the losses and, you know, just like that, that steady striving for that competitive edge to like make you grow and to just win. Uh, you know, earlier on as well, you know, you played at Provi uh, Proviso East. You led your high right, school team yeah. to the state finals. Um, you, I think in like the state, the state semifinals and like back to back years, but yeah. I believe, you know, there's a certain point where you lost out to Simeon on both years as well, which I know could yeah. be like devastating. It's hard because you want to get past, you want to complete the, you know, the journey and championship. But I would love to kind of know, you know, in those years too, we talked about how you've learned to, you know, win and be competitive. But what did, what are those years of kind of like, you know, going so far, but still not getting as far as you wanted to go, you know, with your team or that early on, what that kind of teach you um, going into the career that you went into now, you know, being in the NBA and things like that? Um, Really those, those years just um, taught me really just to stay with it, you know, just persevere through anything and, you know, always, um, you know, rely on your teammates. Cause you know, it's not just going to be one guy who wins it all. You know, Jabari right. was, you know, top in the state, but he wasn't the primary reason why they, you know, won the championship that year we lost. You know, it was a couple other guys knocked down big shots and all of that. And, you know, from my my team and my perspective, you know, it was a lot of guys that contributed all year long. Um, so it was, you know, obviously, well, for me in my game, um, I was a big team guy, you know. I got to do what I got to do to go out there and, you know, win to help us, you know, contribute to winning. But, it's always, you know, going to be a team effort, you know, one through 12, one through 15, whoever, you know, however many guys on the team. Um, and, you know, throughout that, you know, it was just always me and, you know, my my guys that I grew up with, my, my friends, we always played basketball. We always got better. So it's just that continuous reps, you know, in the gym, getting up shots, you know, um, just all of that throughout high school, throughout my high school years really gave me that, that confidence and that, that um just that skill set going into college and uh it just grew from there then it, it, it transitioned into more you know uh okay this is going to be more of a physical game speed game so I got to work on my body even more and you know that's that's something that I uh take you know serious to this day you know I'm always in the gym uh, getting a lift in you know before games after games um off days and then just transitioning into the NBA putting all of that together because you're going to need it all. You're going to need your team. You're going to need to make sure you take care of your body, you know, whether it's eating, lifting, or whatever it is. You're going to need to stay in the gym, putting up reps. You know, you're going to need to always continue to get better, see how you can improve and adapt, especially if you go to another team. Um, and then just being a student of the game. Um, you know, I always watched a lot of basketball because my brother 
played, obviously. And, you know, I mean, I'm going to games, you know, watching him. they on the West Coast um, late night. You know, he played for the Lakers. So we always up late, you know, watching the games. Um, so I was just a student of the game young. And it was uh, helped me transition when I had Larry Brown in college. He was a, a, a basketball fanatic. Like, you know, that's all he wanted to do was watch film and teach guys. So that – contributed and then uh, going into the NBA was just a smoother transition to be able to watch film with coaches, sit down with them, you know, have them point out things that I'm doing good, things that I can do better, how to guard this guy, what's his tendencies and stuff like that. So it's just a, it's just a combination of things, man, starting, you know, from high school um, and contributing to how I got to the NBA. So it's, uh, it's just the ongoing thing. Um, and I always, you know, watch highlights and stuff just to remind myself and put myself back in the mind state of when I was in high school, college, and then where I'm at now. I love that. Every every part of the journey is important and pivotal to the life sure. you live today. So I love that that awareness is there and you continue to implement that. So that's extremely important. Um, you and your brother, you know, talked about that love and passion earlier on for basketball, but you also have yeah. a love and passion for giving back to the community and having an impact off, um, off the court as well. Um, both y'all, I believe... Both of y'all founded the Salute Foundation, which is a charity that we'll be donating 10K to as well to continue our community efforts. Uh, I'm going to take a little second here to give some people more information on the foundation, in case you're not as familiar. Um, Salute Foundation, established to provide events, programs, services, and resources to underserved youth um, and adults within the low-income neighborhoods, similar to the economy of Maywood as well. Um, you know, we talked about that passion, I said, for you and your brother for sports and for, for basketball in particular, but where does that passion come from for you as far as like, you know, giving back and having a community impact and more so doing it with your brother, keeping it like in, in a family way too? Yeah, for me, um, it, it was a few things. Um, so just starting out on the, the foundation and like some of the things that we do within it, um, you know, for, as far as the camp and everything, I seen it growing up early with the the older guys, Michael Finley, um, Tim Hardaway, Corey mm. McGetty. You know, a lot of those guys put on camps for the uh, for us. You know, when we were growing up, you know, five starting at five, six, seven. You know, all the way up to high school. And that was just something fun for us to do, man. It was some. I mean, we had back to back camps. One week it was Michael Finley camp. Then the next week, when my brother started doing it, it was his camp. And two weeks later, it'd be Corey McGetty camp. So. It was just a way to keep the kids in the in the community engaged and, you know, having fun. The competition with us was at an all-time high. You know, kids from the city, from Maywood, everybody, you know, coming to the camps. Out-of-town kids were even coming to the camps uh, at a point. And that was something that I, I grew up in and I loved it. I mean, you know, five days out of the week, um, 8 o'clock to 3 to 4, you know, just nothing but basketball, teaching. Um, you know, implemented some things in there uh, as far as studying wise, financial history, you know, just different things. And then on the last day, it would be like a cookout, like a celebration for the community. Um, and that's something that, you know, just was stuck with me year after year, made friends, got better, you know, on the basketball side. So that's something that I started to take over because it kind of faded out. Um, so I, I picked that uh, baton up and just kept doing that. So that was one of my inspirations for the, something that we do within the camp and the foundation. And then just other things in the community, uh, seeing uh, other activities and seeing other um, programs, camps, um, uh, back to school giveaways, um, you know, holiday drives and things throughout, you know, my years growing up, seeing different guys um, and different, you know, community people just, just stay involved, you know, stay around, you know, look out for our people. Um, that's something that I, you know, was always around because I was always just running through the neighborhoods trying to, you know, hang out with my friends and do different things. So we would go to the gym and, you know, in the back, we're in the gym, but in the front, they got something going on. And, you know, they invite us up there to get something to eat. So, you know, it was just a real, you know, uh, community and village oriented, you know, mindset for me um, when I was going into the foundation. And, you know, my brother already had his when he was growing up. So I'm like, hey, you know what I'm saying? You you know, when you want to start this foundation again, because he got, you know, insight, you know, on what it takes. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, we were able to do that. Uh, and we got big plans, man. We got big plans for a community center. Um, you know, we're going to have different programs going into it. Um, different financial literacy, violence uh, prevention programs. 
as well as, you know, our basketball, then, you know, we plan on doing workforce. Uh, we plan on doing something for those who really don't like sports, you know, if they into music, if they want to be an artist or whatnot, you know, so we got a, we got a lot of plans. Um, and, you know, we're going to mainly um, focus, you know, on the Maywood area, um, Broadview, Bellwood, the city of Chicago. And then, you know, one day we'll uh, branch out to different states and cities, um, you know, forming connections with all the people that I know. So, uh, now I'm telling you, we, we got a lot of plans for the foundation. I love it. I love to hear that because that, that those things are, I mean, NBA impact and your your impact as far as you know people see you and your athletic your, your skills that way is one thing, but to have that impact face to face or just to be able to give the community something to do that's productive, yeah. that's progressive, is is so important because sometimes it's so overlooked when you know you know live in a city where there isn't much to do. There aren't much, any like resources that are progressive or productive. You know, mm -hmm. that's where you start going to the negative areas or things start to happen or, you know, kids look to outlets in other ways. So it's so important to have these kind of things, these kind of platforms, resources, opportunities, programs. It's all so pivotal. So much applause and and, and amazing work to continue to keep that going. I love that. Yeah, now, I want to ask you a couple more things before we kind of get ready to wrap things up too. Um, I want to ask you, actually, I want to backtrack a little bit to want to ask you one more thing about the foundation. Okay. What's been one of the most fulfilling aspects of this, of this foundation? Like what's one of, like, one of the most, like a moment you had during this foundation or you were just like, wow, it's so blown away. Of course, everything keeps you going to, you know, continue to do more and touch more people and, and, and provide more for the community. But was there ever one moment where you're just like, oh man, like I almost have to step back and be like, this is, this is why we do it. This is why I have to keep going. Um, man, it's, it's so many, man. Whenever I'm out there and just, you know, interacting with the, the, the kids, um, you know, at camps or different events that we have and, you know, whether it's in the park, um, or it's, you know, at my camp in the gym, like just having that interaction with them, you know, having that interaction with the community, whether they, you know, they, they, they can just see, you know, face to face, like they can, you know, actually shake hands and, you know, know that, you know, like it's real, like, and then, uh, that, to me, I feel like it gives them hope and, you know, a confidence that they can do something as well. And, you know, they can make it out, you know, and they can go better their, their lives and their family lives. Um, but I would say one, one time um, that I would like always remember and cherish is uh, I had a um, holiday drive uh, a couple of years ago and we gave away uh, a lot of coats. Um, a lot of coats and uh, clothes, bags and things. And, you know, Puma, they sponsored it. Um, and it was a family. It was a, it was a, it was a guy who brought, I believe he had six kids mm -hmm. and all of them got coats, you know, all of them got coats that they liked, you know, they, they were able to pick it out. Um, and, you know, I got a picture of it and it was, it was like one of the, you know, greatest feelings because just knowing where we come from and, you know, how sometimes, you know, we don't have the easiest route, you know, um, and everybody doesn't have the same route. Everybody doesn't have the same resources and, you know, finances and, you know, for him to be able to uh, clothe himself and his, you know, his kids during the winter and to get, you know, Chicago get crazy cold. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that was, that was a blessing, you know, for me. Um, and it was one of those moments like, man, I'm like really here making an impact and like this, this feel good. So I'm gonna keep it going. Um, and you know, that, that's just, you know, one of those moments, you know, I'll never forget. I love that. Yeah. Cause it means so much. I mean, that's, that's such a big family. I can only imagine the work that has to go into providing for six sure. kids. So just to be able to accomplish this, what we may sometimes overlook as something like, you know, small, that's so big to him, you know, it, yeah. it's, it's, it, it's a lot. I mean, yeah, definitely that means a lot and goes a long way. Um, one thing you mentioned was like how, while you were telling me that story was the different routes that people have in their life, different parts mm -hmm. of the journey, and, and and you yourself as well. You've had a, a different journey as well. You know, you've had off, you've had you know highs and lows, adversities on the court, off the court, and all mm -hmm. kind of things that kind of helped shape you and how you pursue life, how you pursue the things that you want to do, your career, your day to day, those two kind of things. From your perspective and your route and your journey and who you are today, um, what would you say kind of what has your journey taught, taught you about yourself and how do you approach life daily differently because of what your journey has taught you? Uh, man, it, it taught me. I, I, I know for sure I'm cut from a different cloth, man. A lot of things that I went through, certain people wouldn't be able to deal with it and keep pushing and have like the 
the like the peace and the 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 um resilience and the the ambition to keep going and moving forward like i'm at a point in my life where i'm like I'm, I'm, I feel good. You know, every day I wake up, like it's, let's go get it. Like, you know, whether it's basketball, whether it's, you know, some of my business and ventures, like, it's like, come on, man, let, let's do it. I'm ready to, you know, take on the day. Um, and, you know, that's, that just comes from, you know, my upbringing, who I am and just, you know, just that, that will, that hunger, that fire with inside. Um, and, you know, that's, that's all I can really um, contribute um, to that. Like it's, it's so much that goes on on a daily basis. And, you know, don't get me wrong. Everybody has their different, you know, um, obstacles that they have to face. Sure. Um, but, you know, you just got to, you got to approach them with, you know, full steam ahead and, you know, how that, how that confidence that you're going to be able to get through it, accomplish it or whatever it is. And then if it's something that you do stumble upon, figure it out, like dissect it to the fullest and learn from it. And then try to find a way to get past it, you know, because that's not going to be your last obstacle. That's not going to be, you know, the last thing you have to face in life. Like, I mean, I can name countless times where it's an obstacle, you know, whether it was uh, something that was life threatening or something that was as small, you know, as, you know, I mean, facing. Like, it's just, you know, different obstacles, you know, present themselves different, but it has not been the last one. Like it's, you know, another obstacle mm -hmm. you overcome that one, you know, you accomplish whatever it is and then you on to the next portion of your life and something else presents itself, you know, and, you know, God only gives his toughest battles to those he feel like can, you know, handle them. And, you know, I feel like, you know, um, me personally, you know, I've taken on a lot and I still got a lot that I know is going to come my way. So I just try to prepare myself uh, mentally, physically, you know, spiritually to take on, you know, whatever it is, um, but just being resilient, you know, and just waking up every day, you know, saying I got to go get it, you know, whatever your motivations are, whatever your reasons are, you know, always keep them at your forefront. That's what I do. You know, my kids, my family, you know, my health, my wealth, um, you know, all of those things that I keep at, you know, my forefront gives me that fuel and that drive to, you know, keep going every day. Hmm. A lot, a lot of gems and a lot, a lot of good word in what you just said right there. I'm, I'm going to leave that to the people to dissect and to take with them. That's, that's real good stuff. You're 100% right. I, I love that so much. Um, I want to ask, I was good. And and yeah, that was good. I'm going to have to rewind that myself and just take some, <laughs> some tidbits from it. Um, I want to ask one last thing. I really appreciate this conversation. I, I wish I could go you know, do even more, but I know I got to respect the time as well. But I want to uh, end this conversation on one last thing. Um, at this point in your life, in your career, what are the next three goals for you? And, uh, like, like what, yeah, what are the next three goals for you in your life? It could be career oriented. It could be life oriented. It could be just personal goals. But what are the next three goals that you're trying to attain? Um, that's a good question. You know, uh, I would say the, one of them are, um, you know, getting back to the NBA. Um, obviously, that's my, you know, dreams, uh, my passion at the moment. And, you know, um, I feel like I'm still, you know, an NBA player, you know, I still got the talent, I still got the, you know, the, the, the um, capacity to continue to get better and contribute to a team, you know, helping to win the championship. So, you know, that's uh, definitely one of them. Um, another one is to um, continue my business endeavors uh, that I have going on in real estate. Uh, I have a few mm -hmm. projects that I have, uh, that I need to get finished up and that's going to open the door for a few more projects. So um, I need to get those done um, on the commercial, commercial real estate side. I'm a big commercial uh, real estate guy. So um, getting those done and accomplished and on to the next step for those. And then the last one, um, I was, I really don't want to choose between, you know, the two, but um, I mean, just continue to build a bond and a relationship with my kids and then getting my foundation to where it needs to be to sustain and be able to run itself, um, you know, for the years to come. Uh, I would say those four, I know you asked for three, but you know, those four are just heavy on my mind right now and uh, something that's, that's just on my list to do. So I got to get those done. I love it. Yeah. No, I'm totally cool for, we're not, we're not going to, we're not going to knock you for doing more than yeah. three. So I'm totally cool. <laughs> that's how life is. Yes, sir. No, man. Well, thank you so, so much for tuning into an episode of Community Voices. And man, I just want to say all three of those goals, I hope you not only accomplish them, but you soar beyond them. So always got my support over here as well. 
Once again, thank you to everybody tuning in to another episode of Community Voices, and we'll catch y'all next time. Peace.